three weeks earlier. Welcome to another Vintergata on Wednesday. I just received two very exciting packages that I'm gonna open right now. One is from Marius in uh, Munich, and the other one is from Tobias in Gothenburg. Technique Wirtschaft Gesellschaft. Have fun bombarding these parts. Oh, this is so cool. Wow. And wow. In the video called How to Hit Bass Strings with Marbles, I designed this bass plate that is built to guide the marbles to hit the bass strings correctly on Marble Machine X. And Marius did two prints of this base plate. One, the black one on his home printer, and the white one on an industrial SLS printer with a fantastic print quality. I've started to test how this base plate is working. But I will cover that in another video, so let's check out what was in Tobias' package. This is the first generation 3D printed drums for the Marble Machine X. Chapter 1, Kick Drum Assembly. These are all the parts for the snare drum and now I'm gonna assemble them. Then I'm gonna fill all these compartments with some rice. I made this plane at a, at a ten, 10 degree angle. That's because when we assemble the drum, we want the drum to hang at an angle like this down like this to make the marbles bounce off and but I don't want all the rice to slide to one side so when the drum is angled this plane will be somewhat uh, perpendicular to gravity and then we're gonna attach the microphone in the top Before putting the last two screws on, we're gonna assemble the ball hinge. Tobias came up with the idea to cut this part in half and print them on the print bed like this. Because then the ball gets perfectly round because the printer doesn't have to add supports to print from below. You would try to tune it. I think actually we can tune this. It's, I think it went up almost 100 cents. The other side of the ball hinge is this one. It was actually Marius who said that we should make a ball hinge because 
This allows us to have a rigid connection here and then be able to put the drum in exactly whatever angle we want it to be in. After assembling all the drums I went on to build a test rig, something that allowed me to drop marbles consistently on the drums. At this part of the project I'm much more interested of the physical mechanics and where and how to mount the drums and the movements of the drums than I'm interested in the actual sound of the drums. It's because we're trying to figure out how the marbles will run around in the machine, how we will drop them, where we will drop them and how we will catch them. And I know that once we have that figured out, I'm going to be able to experiment a lot with sounds and change the print of the drums afterwards. So that's why I'm not so focused on uh, the sound aspect of these drums in this video. Although in the end of this video I will show you how the drums sounds with the contact microphones. But the real experimenting with finding the perfect sounds and the perfect effects for these drums is going to happen in the future. So, we have a test setup finished. First I want to try the movement. Because I want a very specific movement of the drums when they're hit. This is only for visual and aesthetical reasons. I want the audience to be able to see which instruments that are playing. And I'm also quite inspired by the anime music videos. And all the instruments in the anime music videos always jumps very, very nicely. So. I have a spring here, and I have an adjustable counterweight here. And up here is also a very important test for the whole project, because up here is a place for two marbles to be released individually, but I hope that they can hit the same spot. This is doubling up the channel. So this means two marbles, different channels will hit play the same instrument. The plastic of the top layer is too thin, so this leads to inconsistent jumps. Thicker top layer. Okay. I want this drum to move individually from the bar. I want to try to hang the drum with elastic bands. I'm already suspicious of this elastic. It's too strong. I have another one. So I'm gonna take this off and put on the light elastic instead. But let's try the movement now. I'm gonna make another shock mount design that is attached under the drum so it doesn't grow in diameter. I'm gonna do that in CAD and we're gonna try to print that. And when I saw the slow motion of this I had this idea that I should make the new design so it can only flex downwards, like with an upper stop, like for example like this. Because this wobbliness is partly induced by the fact that it can wobble both directions. But if I put a positive stop to one side, I hope we only get an initial deflection when the marble hit, and then return to its spot, like that. I think that looks more like more like any music. I'm gonna connect the microphones now to the computer. Time for some quick sound tests. So first, this is how the kick drum sounds without contact microphones being connected in the room. And this is how the kick drum sounds in the contact microphones with no audio processing. And this is how the kick drum sounds through the contact microphones with audio processing. So, snare. Hyatt in the room.
the Hyatt contact microphones without audio processing and Hyatt with audio processing. There is a lot of improvements I can do to these drums to make the clean sound of the not processed contact microphone become much better. I have a long list of improvements that I will do on the next print and I will cover that in an upcoming video. The drum that I was least happy with was the hi-hat. That's that transient sounds more like an electrical error than an actual hi-hat. So, I'm, I'm, I already have a plan how to solve that. We're gonna put rice in the hi-hat as well, so you have a more t -t -t, a longer sound instead of this super short tick. So, a lot of improvements on this, but as you see, the 3D printed drums will work and they feel like a fantastic addition to Marble Machine X. So thanks so much to Tobias for doing so great prints of them. Thanks for watching and see you on the next Wintergott on Wednesday.